Hey guys, it's Quentin from Fandroid.com here with the Galaxy Nexus and the Asus Transformer Prime. Uh, we have these two devices here because we're going to look at Google Chrome uh, beta for Android and it was just released and announced yesterday. Um, and the reason we need to take a look at it on these devices is because they have Android 4.0 on them and the application is Android 4.0 only for now. I'm not sure they're going to be coming uh, out with versions for earlier iterations of Android. Hopefully they do, but uh, if for whatever reason you're not on Android 4.0, here's a quick look at Chrome and what you can expect when you do get on there. So uh, we're going to take a look at the phone version first here on the Nexus and go ahead and unlock that. Um, so let's launch it and show you guys what you see when you first launch it. So uh, this is sort of your speed dial and you see this whenever you launch the browser for the first time or a new tab. Uh, and these are your most frequently visited sites. So whatever sites you visit frequently, whatever you visit often, uh, they'll show up here. You can see I have Fandroid right there, Mint.com, Gmail. Uh, so if you want to get to your favorite sites without having to go to your favorites, uh, your favorite sites are going to eventually start popping up here and stay here. So um, and this is pretty accurate for me. Uh, you just go ahead and touch on one real quick. It'll just load it right in that same pane. And we load Android. The browser is pretty quick. I am on Wi-Fi, but it's pretty quick if you have a good connection. Um, it's a very good rendering engine, the same rendering engine used on Google Chrome for desktops, uh, because this code comes from the same uh, Google Chrome repository. Uh, so all the code is, I guess, sort of integrated. It's all uh, pulled from the same trunk. So uh, we have a WebKit HTML5 browser. You can see it's very fast in performance. Uh, scrolling up and down is no problem. You do get a bit of checkerboarding sometimes, but uh, once the browser loads all that, um, all the page, the whole page up, you, you really don't get that after that. I know sometimes the browser will kind of uh, erase everything above and below uh, or outside of the view of the screen, but that doesn't happen here. Uh, very smooth to scroll. You can pinch to zoom. That's very smooth as well. Um, and the rendering engine is just fine. Uh, nothing, no problems with any sites I visit. Uh, it all looks like it's supposed to look when you look at it on a desktop. So. Uh, I didn't expect anything less because it's kind of the same rendering engine also in the default Android 4.0 browser. Um, so we also don't have Flash because Adobe is done with Flash for Android or for mobile period. They're not going to be developing uh, any more features for it. So um, they're not going to be implementing Google Chrome support. Hopefully something can get hacked up for that. But for now, uh, you're going to have to stick to HTML5 for video and things like that. So hopefully uh, more and more sites start going toward that direction as far as providing content that's capable uh, that's uh, compatible with these phones without flash um, so we're going to take a look at the address bar next and this is kind of what you get on chrome as well this is kind of the um, I forgot what they call it but I know in, like on firefox they call it awesome bar uh, here's chrome's version of it you start typing the url or a search term in the uh, address box and everything comes up you can see there's a search icon next to what I just typed or they'll predict where I want to go so uh, they know I have fanjury.com uh, bookmarks and they'll bring that up at the top and I can just touch that and go there if I want it you can also uh, go to your, they also pull up things from your history that you visit often and they'll pull up um, web page suggestions for you to just go straight to even if they're not in your bookmarks or your history um, so that's pretty much the same from Chrome uh, and then we also have tabs so tabs is nothing new we've had them for a while now but this is kind of different they've done this a lot different from what I've ever seen uh, so you can see we have this kind of a card a vertical card layout kind of what you see on web OS but vertically so you can scroll up and down through your tabs um, and they have this cool little an animation that goes on when you do it kind of just a really cool animation good eye candy taking advantage of that uh, hardware rendering that GPU rendering um, GPU acceleration so to close the tab I can just swipe to the left or to the right and just get it off the screen and they're closed you can also close them with the X to the upper right hand side of each tab um, and then if I just want to go to a tab I can just touch it and uh, do it just like that now the thing is uh, for some reason Google Chrome has been reloading all my tabs every time I switch between them so um, I'm not sure if that's uh, a cache issue that can be tweaked um, or I'm just not sure what's going on with that. It doesn't really happen that often in the stock browser, so perhaps it's something Google needs to tweak. This is a beta, so I don't expect this to be perfect, but I do feel that the pages uh, load way too often for my liking. Um, I do have eight tabs open, though, so I can understand why uh, why they would want to clear all that stuff out of the um, out of cache and out of memory, but um, just something to deal with for now. And uh, let's go ahead and jump into the settings menu. You can see we have the back and the forward buttons as well as the bookmark button to add, bookmark, uh, add the current page drawn to your bookmarks. Um, you have your new tab and new incognito tab and that's something we haven't seen on stock browsers. Um, and if you don't know, incognito from 
uh, in incognito mode from the desktop version uh, pretty much allows you to browse without site storing your cookies or um, without your browser storing cache for that site and things like that. Um, it'll still, stuff that tracks network usage will still track that. I'm not sure uh, why you would have, um, maybe you're at work and you have, uh, you're in a Wi Fi network and your company monitors your usage. Uh, they can still track that. It's just that the browser itself won't store cookies and um, cache and things like that. Um, but it's still a very good mode if you just want to, I guess, quickly look at something and you don't want people to know you've looked at it. I don't know why you would do it, but um, there it is anyway. <laughs> Up and down arrows and just go ahead and click that. And this is another big feature of Google's. Um, so you can sync your phone with your uh, browser on the desktop and bring all your tabs from that session over here. Uh, so you can see these are all the tabs that I have open in my browser uh, on my laptop that's actually near the room. So if I'm on a computer and I'm, I just suddenly need to go somewhere and I don't want to end my browsing session, uh, I can just take my phone and not even worry about it because I can sync it uh, while I'm on the go. I can get all my tabs here so I can just touch one and it'll load as if you have it um, on your phone itself. So. Uh, the thing is with this, it doesn't bring over any of your cookies or anything like that. So if you go to a site where you're logged in or we have to log in, you're going to have to log in again from here. It also doesn't bring in your auto save. So when you log in, you're going to have to save that locally. That's all locally. So um, it does have auto, I mean, uh, auto fill, sorry. It does have auto fill. Um, it does allow you to um, store cookies and, and stay logged in the websites. Um, but you can't do it from browser to browser. You have to do it here first. But once you do sign in, and then if you have that tab open again, um, or that site open again on your desktop, and you go over to your phone, uh, you're going to be logged in from there. So, uh, which they would have uh, added the option to bring all that stuff over, so you don't have to worry about logging in and stuff like that. But again, it's a beta. Maybe that stuff can be changed by the time they uh, have a stable, a final release. Um, maybe not. I don't know what they're going to be doing. If I wanted to switch through tabs um, just on, on the page itself and without having to open the tabs menu, uh, I could just put my thumb over the left or right edge of the screen and kind of just swipe it to the left or right that way. Uh, it's a pretty cool and easy and fun way to switch between tabs. It does take a little bit of practice because you have to get your thumb ex like just right on the edge of the screen, but uh, once you get used to it, uh, it's, very, it's a very cool feature. Google's done a great job with the eye candy. They're taking uh, full advantage of the hardware acceleration features in Android 4.0 um, so we're glad to see them doing stuff like this and I guess sharpening up the user interface experience of Android uh, let's also just jump into the settings real quick oh, sorry that's the share button you guys already know what that does jump into the settings and we don't have much here we do have uh, the ability to change our search engine to Google, uh, Google Bing or Yahoo you can sign into Chrome so you need you need to sign into Chrome on here and on your uh, desktop Chrome in order to do the tab sync uh, you can also manage your autofill form you save your your saved passwords uh, you can do bandwidth management clear your browsing data do your privacy settings content settings which is like JavaScript um, and things like that unfortunately you can't change the home page but um, I, I personally don't mind it because I always use the speed dial anyway when I first start. So, uh, but for for, pe uh, for people who do want to use it, and I know there are people who do like to um, open the same web web page every time they start the browser, um, that's not going to be an option right now. Hopefully, they add that later on. They also have developer tools stuff that me and you probably won't use in everyday situations, uh, but it's stuff that developers will get a great uh, will, ha will get great use out of. Um, so settings are pretty much bare, uh, not really much you want to do in there, there's not much exciting going on, but again, it's only a beta. You never know what they're going to add by the time this becomes uh, version 1.0, and uh, even beyond that, they're also going to update the browser and add new features and uh, hopefully create a good user experience over time. Uh, so that's pretty much Chrome on the phone. Now I want to show you guys Chrome on the tablet, and this is the Asus Transformer Prime screen, it's kind of dirty. Um, go ahead and unlock that. This is Android 4.0. Just go ahead and launch that real quick. And unlike on the phones, you don't get a speed dial right away. You have to specify that you want to open a tab, but you just do that by touching that button there. And you can see that the interface is more um, more akin to what you'd see on the desktop version. So you have the tabs up here. You don't have the kind of thumb through tab interface that you get on the phone. But that's because you don't need it because y'all you have all this screen real estate. Uh, so let's go ahead. You can just open the tab by pressing that plus button just like on the desktop and then they have the uh, X's for closing out just like on the desktop. So uh, to, to, you can rearrange the tabs if you want just by holding it and then dragging and dropping it just like on the desktop. <laughs> so uh, pretty much um, this whole top 
bar is going to be like what you'd find on your computer. You have your uh, voice button there for voice searching and voice input. So they have that embedded right into the address bar as well as the bookmarks button. And you have your back reloading uh, forward over here. Um, bookmarks and other devices is, are the same as on uh, phones. You get your PC right here, your PC tabs. Also have my Galaxy Nexus. You can see that right there. For some reason, my tab, uh, my tablet was not showing up on my phone, uh, but my phone is showing up on my tablet. So. Uh, I'm going to have to figure that out, but you can uh, do the same thing on here as you could on the phone. Uh, just switch between tab, open up the new web page, and there we go. See, on ESPN, I would be signed in on my desktop, but I'm not signed in here because it's not bringing over the cookies and my autofill information. But that's okay. Once you sign in, um, it'll all come over. Uh, you won't have to do that stuff anymore, so... Um, let's go into settings and just show you guys it's pretty much the same thing. Settings, uh, you get your, you got a different interface. You have your cell phone uh, offset to the left, and then all the content and options off to the right. So, uh, sign into Chrome, you can sync Chrome to mobile, uh, which is pretty much like, I guess, Chrome to phone, but it's uh, integrated. So, um, then you have your bandwidth management, autofill, save passwords, under the hood stuff, uh, just like on the phone. So, nothing really different there and uh, pretty much nothing different anywhere we have this just a different interface uh, adapted for the big screen looks kinda like Chrome on desktop has the same features as Chrome on phone um, and this is a very good browser in my opinion it'll be great when they start adding some more features uh, hopefully they um, update it for to bring over your autofill information and your um, your cookies and all that stuff automatically uh, but for now it's a very good browser I really like the integration with Chrome on the desktop I like being able to walk out of the house without worrying about uh, having to open the pages on my phone or my tablet uh, because you know you have more important things to worry about obviously when you're on the road doing stuff so um, that's been Chrome for Android just a quick look at it I know the video is not that quick but um, there's a lot to go through uh, check it out in the Android market I will have a link to the description uh, a link to the market in the description box and a link to our fan Android post about it yesterday um, so go ahead and check it out if you can and if you can't um, just wait for it and hopefully Google does bring this to older operating systems soon. Quentin from Fandroid.com. Thanks.